Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I will be presenting to you the topic of decision trees in the unit 1.7 of IB Business Management. So the table of content for this unit um, is the fishbone diagram uh, where the video to it is already out on my channel. So please check it out. Today we'll be discussing the decision tree and then um, I'll be bringing out the force field analysis and the Gantt chart. So about the decision tree. It's a quantitative organizational planning tool which helps managers analyze the probability of success of different strategies or options. So it's basically to evaluate different options. Um, the decision tree visualizes the probable out outcomes of all the possible options the business has. Um, in this decision tree, which I will be showing an example in the next slide, the circles stand for the chance node, and then the square stands for choice or decision. And you should remember this as um, you'll, you'll need to draw it in exams, and you'll have to be accurate with this. Okay, so what you need for the decision tree is, um, you need all the different options that a business has. Um, for example, um, one option could be expansion to a new city or maybe um, doing a new marketing campaign. Another thing you'll need is the total cost of these options. For example, the expansion to another city will cost at least $5 million or exactly $5 million. And uh, you'll also need the, the different probabilities of all the outcomes. Um, by this, I mean that um, you'll need the probability of success of each option and um, of failure of each option. And that can also be a, a medium or you'll basically need all the, the probabilities for all the outcomes of the specific option. For example, in this case, there's a 20% chance of success um, for the expansion to a new city. And then the last thing that you'll need is the revenues associated with these outcomes from the last point. For example, in the success outcome, revenues would be 25 million US dollars for the company. Now, this is how the decision tree um, looks like, and it looks pretty difficult. This is actually my decision tree that I use for my IA, and uh, my teacher actually liked it. So maybe you should guide, you guys should also use it for the IA if you if you're still doing it. Um, and I'll talk you through it because it's actually pretty simple. So as you can see, there are the there's first a square, and then you'll have these three different options or decisions. Um, the first one is the expansion to Las Vegas. Then the second one is ads for the current location, or just do nothing. And then there's the chance note of A, B, C. The chance note is obviously a circle, as you can see. Um, then you'll see the probabilities of the different outcomes after the circle. On the right here, where I'm pointing with my mouse at, for the for the success of this expansion to Las Vegas um, is 25%, and the failure is 75%. By the way, if you haven't noticed, right next to the Las Vegas thing, um, the costs are written, and you'll have to write them also li just like this in the real um, tree. <laughs> and then right after this um, success outcome and the probability of success you'll see the revenue. In this case, it'd be 1.3 million um, NTD, which is the Taiwanese dollar. And like I told you before in the last slides, we'll add um, all the revenues after, after multiplying the revenues with the, um, with the probability, we'll add the revenues together um, to give you this sum and then for the last thing you'll need to um, subtract the costs that you just wrote down here in the in the first um, line from the total expected revenue and then what you what you will get at the end is the expected value and that's the thing that you'll be comparing at the end for example in my, in my decision tree, you'll have the expected value of minus uh, negative $9,500. Um, 
and then for the option B, you'll have $51,500, and then for the doing nothing, it's zero. And if you compare it now, the $51,500 would probably be, be the best option, as you can see. So now to the advantages and disadvantages of the decision tree, the advantages being on the left and the disadvantages being on the right. So the first advantage is that the outcomes can be compared more objectively as the decision making is formalized. Because you do have all these steps, there's no room for, sub for subjective um, op uh, opinion between those steps or in those steps, which makes it more formalized and therefore makes it more objective. A disadvantage on the other hand would be that there are no qualitative factors involved. For example, the views of the stakeholders or the overall business objectives are not included in this. So there's no room for the, these qualitative factors, which is a pretty big deal. You can't just go off of numbers all the time. You'll also need the context. The second advantage would be that it's easier to follow due to offering a logical and visual representation of various decisions in their, and their outcomes. Uh, what is meant by this is that it's very easy for, for your business partners or for people and management to look at it and to follow it. It's not a super complex way. It visualizes good for other also employees that want to understand this, this decision. So it's um, great for everyone. And then the last advantage would be that the risks of all the options will have, will have to be considered because you'll have to think about all the outcomes of the different options, meaning it will force you force the manager to think about the potential risks and it will force them to include these potential risks. Now, the second disadvantage um, is that the actual outcomes may differ significantly as all these outcomes are only forecasts and predictions. They are only based on predictions made beforehand. And this also ties into the third and last and disadvantage, which is by the time the decision is taken, the data, the data may also be outdated. This is a point that the DIB actually likes to likes to list up. Uh, but I personally like the second point more that these are all based on predictions from the beginning on. So there's pretty much the subjectiveness already um, uh, brought into this whole decision tree thing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.